If I speak too fast, please let me know. I would like to uh, refer to the slogan that was associated with a common exhibition, the less, the more. And I considered the first part of this phrase, how much is less? It's a problem I would like to focus on. To begin with, I would like to show you a block of flats, uh, one of the many you can come across in many Polish cities as well as in Eastern Germany, although they might be a bit better quality. It's a typical block of flats from the 50s and 60s that is dying a technical death in a very simple way, using thermal insulation, using a few colors, not even like the ones uh, like the ones like Mondrian use, but simple colors, so a very modest set of uh, set of techniques. You can totally reshape it. So this is what it looked like uh, before. It was thermally insulated. So we can say that it's well, it wasn't intended. Here we can say the facade of the building after renovation. A very little was done to it, but to what effects? And please concentrate for a second about how effective it was. Leon Tarasewicz, a well-known artist in Poland, maybe even in Europe, in 2018 created such a painting or installation in a square, in a, in a court of the Museum of Architecture in Poznań. The, the artist was to blend with a medieval garden for monks. It was a very difficult task, but he did. Sorry, we are experiencing some technical problems. It doesn't work. Maybe it's the battery. Przy okazji można było prosić nie wychodzić z tego światełka tam o o właśnie tego tak dobrze. Ja mam zawsze to tam mówię, The artist famous for his avant-garde approach to painting was supposed to blend with um, an iconic piece of architecture not only in Wrocław but also in Poland so he was tasked with the responsibility of entering a, a historical space so he came up with an idea of changing the color of the path in 2018 he was awarded uh, the Civili Award it's an honor given in in exchange for great exhibition achievements in Poland. We can go to another slide. This is what it looks like at close range. I believe it's something very original and a large-scale piece of work. It's very interesting. This is what you can do with space without damaging any plants, without damaging trees and magnificent greenery. This is what you can do when you enter a medieval garden, achieving very much with very little. 
Another subject that I would like to address is some kind of um, behavior of architects that were developed in the Bauhaus spirit, referring to the function of a transparent and clear architecture. But before I move on, I would like to show you the Wasser Tower, the Water Tower in Wrocław. It was created by Karl uh, Klim, who was active in Wrocław at the turn of the 19th and 20th century. This is what we imagine a water tower to be. This is a water tower designed by Timmerman and Moore, Moore an England architectist and designer of water walks. It's more modern coming f object coming from the turn of the 19th and 20th century and this is what the water tower from from uh, nearby looks like it's about 70 kilometers from here we spent a lot of time looking for this object and it was designed by Otto Bartning uh, not very well known artist architect in Poland but perhaps more popular in Germany. He was a precursor, precursor of the creator of Bauhaus. So we can say he created in the in the trend in the genre developed and inhabited by many artists, but we can say it's uh, architectural expressionism. Otto Bartnik Bartnik creating the genre of Bauhaus was slightly different from his contemporaries. So if you look for his works on the internet, you will find many interesting works. He created till 1950s, and this facility dates back to 1920. I would just like to show you a few images of this magnificent object. It's very simple. You wouldn't take it for a water tower because it doesn't look, it looks nothing like it, but you might associate it with an entrance to Mordor or some, any or some, from a total, or for a totally different object. It used to be, it used to be built for the for the need of a brick factory, a non-existent at the moment, and this tower is all that is left of the brick factory. It was entered into the register of monuments, and since that time it's been protected and it's totally inaccessible. We tried to locate it, but it's a wonderful piece of architecture. It's located in Jankova Zagańska. It's about 70 kilometers from here in the direction of Krosno. You would reach it in an hour, but you will never get there because it's so remote. When we talk about uh, the Bauhaus and architects of the interwar, interbellum period, another important name you should mention because of the importance of for the world of architecture is Hermann Dernburg. Otto Bartning, when Otto Bartning created the water work, this architect won the competition for designing a shopping center in Wrocław. This is one of the best known architectural objects in the city. We can see clear Bauhaus here, very well defined construction, horizontal lines of windows. It resembles a Scandinavian Scandinavian architecture because the corners are rounded, but Gropius would not have designed it in such a way. Please focus on the details. Well, it's basically soaking gold. The ceiling is supported by heads of people coming from all corners of the world, the Chinese, the Jews, the Germans. 
uh, African Africans the ceramic tiles are interlaced with gold bars and the bricks used to erect the building are somewhat mixed or covered with gold. There is a bit of golden material in them, so this convention does not include many of the Bauhaus ideology to make it worse. The, the pillars at ground zero are covered in golden elements and they resemble pins covered with a golden mosaic. It's a Byzantine way of designing details. In architecture, that was set in the Bauhaus trend. As uh, we've been talking about gold, let's move to the cathedral in Lavaletta in Malta. To say, saying that it soaks, it's soaking gold is an understatement. This is what the interior of the cathedral looks like, and it was actually the architecture of, the obje of this object was reduced. I would like to say this is the less that I've been talking about. It might seem absurd, but the cathedral was erected in the 16th century, whereas in the 17th century it gained the entire decorative aspect. So it was filled to the brim with ornaments, to the point where you could not do anything else. So the Renaissance shape of the object was reduced to bare minimum and this is what it looks like. After the Renaissance, the features of the Renaissance architecture was, were reduced to resemble it, to, to transform it into a, a baroque object. Here we can see the details being overwhelmed by decorative features of the baroque tendency. It's not the kind of baroque we know from continental Europe. It is nothing like it. We can see a huge amount of work. We can see that the column of the altar is filled one centimeter after another with ornamentation made in interaction technique. It was borrowed from a technique of ornamenting wood, but here it's in colorful marble. This is what the floor in the cathedral looks like. It's about 400 grave tones from the Joannites order. Here we can see an example of a cognitive dissonance because monks loved richness as you can see they were not modest to say the least so even after death we can say that these tombstones are soaking with the detail totally distorting the rhythm of the floor in the way in which they are organized in the churches in Florence or Venice. Another less known example from the town of Valletta in Malta, I would like to men mention Lenzo Piano, another architect. He might be well known, he might not be very well known, by Lenzo Piano was the co-worker co -worker of Richard Rogers, both of them won a competition of Georges Pompidou award. It was in the second half of 1970s. The art machine was a good point of departure for every of these architects and Renzo Piano designed the gate to the capital city. 
It's important to mention that cities in Malta are basically strongholds. Malta used to be or continues to be an island in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. It's between Tunis and Sicily, so it's an important place of strategic importance. It was um, it was the 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 the, the conquer the, the place for which many empires competed. But it's important to note that all of the multi cities are surrounded by large fortifications and in this place there was a chasm there was a bridge and the authorities decided that time has come to create some sort of a gate to the city at the main gate this we can see the old city walls here we can see the new city wall created by architects. And this, d this place is a, is a seat of the parliament and other government institutions. If we compare it to the cathedral in La Valletta, we can see that the architects try to achieve the least. The sections of carved stone is a motif repeated in different combinations. And here we can see nothing specific. It's empty. We can see a strong flat wall made of a specific kind of stone that is typical of Malta. This is what it looks like in close. You can feel the atmosphere of a city on the border of Europe and Africa but where it is not unnecessary simple, simple flat wall is created so nobody there really is, is really bothered with the fact that that the lion is in the heart of Europe they also show their sources of inspiration here we can see all the parts of the of the strongholds but in some part it re maintains its structure but as it erodes it creates specific patterns that resemble what we can see in the facade let's take a closer look once again here we can see a better view of what i'm talking about the new this is the new section and this is the old section it's not very elegant it's not very aesthetic but if something is 600 years old it has every right to do to look that way this is what it looks like in close range at the moment so we can see we can see how well the new design blends with the old design and not many buildings are designed this way the walls in old houses look that way these are this effect was not achieved by human but this is the result of erosion basically these the, the wall was carved by water in the context of this, the title of the presentation, I would also like to present to you works of Zdzisław Jurkiewicz. He's an architect. He was an architect and artist. He died ten years ago. I believe he was one of the most underappreciated artists. I would like to show you your, his face because this picture features his glasses which he taped with black paper so that it's because it enhanced his vision Jurkiewicz analyzed the idea of the shape in continuity he was interested in lines and creating colors that blended fluidly it's one of his paintings from the beginning of the 70s it's another 
of his paintings. It doesn't really matter that these are lines or stripes. It's titled 32 meters of blue and red. He was interested in the length of the of the stripe, the amount of ink or paint used on canvas. His m most renowned works come from the period where he analyzed drawings. Here we can see another work titled The Shape of Continuity, 10 times 10 meters. He displays 4 times 10 meters of line, which can be used to create a drawing. But he explores the primate material from which the drawing is made, which is the line. Here you can see four different forms proving that this is the kind of thing you can achieve with a line before you draw a drawing. Here we can other study five times 0 0.6 cubic centimeters. So he analyzes the amount of ink which you that you use when you create a drawing. What would have he done if he took one of the drawings from the second floor by Tobias Stengel and analyzed it in such a way? Probably it would have turned out that the drawings of Tobias' father is 20 times 15 meters and what Tobias drew on these drawings is just uh, half a cubic centimeters of ink. This is what the drawing of Tobias would look like, according to Zdzisław Jurkiewicz. And here we can see something that would summarize my lecture. So this is the less that I enjoy. This is a picture from Mars. It's interesting because Mars is full of natural forms and there are no people. So as you can see, no man is needed for a particular shape to be present and that so that we can use it, enjoy the view of it. I would like to leave you with this fragment of space and I wish that you might ponder the subject of the less the more whenever you analyze Bauhaus the Barak and certain corrections of them as expressionists work with them following their predecessors. Thank you very much for your attention.